You're watching Weekend Saturdays. Here at Backyard Tech. Over the last couple of weeks or so, as I've told you, I've been having real trouble with that SFF that's been running PFSense. On the whole, I think PFSense has been fantastic, but this is not a problem with PFSense. This is a problem with the actual hardware, which means old mate is in his element. However, I can't have it that every time I put that unit under any type of heavy load that it just falls over, has a tantrum, spits the dummy and waves the white flag and says, no, stuff ya, I give up. So for today, we're gonna to try and fix that firewall. But at the same time, I'm gonna have a look at OpenSense as well. Only this video is gonna be about 13 to 14 hours long. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. You are watching Weekend Saturdays here at the Backyard Tech Channel and it's time to get into basically what the plan is for today and that's mainly a hardware day here at Backyard Tech with a few other bits and pieces thrown in. But we're doing this with a twist today, specifically with this video. Now I alluded to this in last night's convo, so if you haven't seen last night's convo, this, this video may leave you scratching your head. Suffice to say, it will take 14 hours to do this. Okay, and that's due in part to we are using technology from the 1960s. Okay, now my longtime viewers will understand this type of scenario. My new viewers, you're probably going to be scratching your head. Figure it out for yourselves. Anyway, now, first off the bat, this has not been a PFSense issue. PFSense has been great. But having looked at OpenSense yesterday, Arvo, I made my mind up. I looked at OpenSense some time ago and I did not like it. And I got absolutely howled on for it. Right? I got belted. How can you not like OpenSense? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, the thing is, you've got to try these things. Now, PFSense has been great. But after looking at OpenSense, I have a sneaking suspicion for me here at home, OpenSense might actually be better. Now, it's all part of the hardened BSD platform. The problem is though, this is not a PFSense related issue. This is a problem with the actual hardware of that SFF. Now you gotta remember that SFF runs on vacuum tubes, okay? So it's gonna take a fair while to do this system setup. And we're also in this video, we're actually gonna look at OpenSense as well. It's gonna be a double setup. First off though, we're gonna use these. Now for those that aren't aware, these are called optical disks. Okay, these are very, very old. Uh, no one uses these these days. I mean, these things only have a transfer rate of one nanobit per hour, okay? Now, the other thing is we're going on to a hard drive. Now, most people wouldn't know what a hard drive is. Suffice to say that it, 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 it runs at about 2400 board, all right? So they're very, very slow. And in, for some people, they are extraordinarily unreliable. In some cases, I think people say that a hard drive lasts about two seconds and then it's dead and they've got to go and buy another one. That's why they use SSD. Because SSD apparently has a lifespan of 700 years, which beats hard drives as we know. I mean, you know, who uses hard drives these days? I think I'm the only one in the world that runs a hard drive, right? Because you've got to remember, it takes me about 36 to 48 hours for my systems to come up here when you think about it. So we're gonna be using these and the way you get data onto these things is you've got to use those terrible, terrible optical drives. I mean, these things are absolutely awful to use. You know, it just takes too long. I mean, this disc alone took about 140 hours to burn. You know, they're very slow. This is why people use like um, internet and, and USB 3 and stuff like that because it's, it's there, it's done. You don't have to worry about it, right? But using these and hard drives, in some cases, you know, it just takes too long. 
And if you're pressed for time, you don't want to wait more than three seconds for something to happen. Otherwise, that's three seconds of gaming or, or whatever that you've lost, and you're never going to be able to get that back again, are you? So you can see here, these things, you, you burn the data onto here, okay? Um, as I said, these these were, you know, we had these in the 60s and 70s. You know, that's just how old these, this technology is. So what we're going to do is we're going to go out to that vacuum tube powered SFF and um, uh, install OpenSense. Now, I believe OpenSense is compatible. Um, we're going to be using a hard drive that runs at about 2400 board um, and an optical drive, which I think runs at about 900 board unfortunately so it's, it, it's going to be a very long video we've also got to put in these terribly slow and you can't do anything with it one gigabit nick right now and i'm the only one in the world that's still using gigabit everyone else is on this 10 gig new stuff and 100 gig new stuff you know people are getting their double like that you know it's done it's right there they're not having to wait anymore so let's go out to the workshop and uh, let's install open sense and then we'll come back to the desk and uh, we'll have a sticky beak at it. Now, I do have my PF Sense settings backed up. So if OpenSense in a hardware environment doesn't really impress me, I can always revert back to PF Sense and just re-upload my initial configuration variables. Um, in saying that though, I'm not gonna show you my variables because they're mine and I'm not sharing them, okay? Suffice to say, a couple of people know them, uh, but that's it. So let's head out to the workshop and let's get stuck into this. Uh, like I said, this video could go for 12 to 14 hours by this by the time this is all done. So let's get into it. Alrighty. So here's this very slow computer from around the 1960s. In fact, actually, I think Univac might be faster than this. So here's the problematic ethernet port this is the msk unit that is causing real problems so what i did this is wan this is lan now these are these two you know one gigabit ethernet cards these are phenomenally slow no one uses one gigabit these days because let's face it you can't do anything on one gig connection you've got to have 10 gig because otherwise you're running at less than serial speed all right, so what I've got to do is I want to get into this and check one of the RAM sticks as well uh, before we continue. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how you boot one of these horrifically old systems. We'll also have a look at this 2400 board rate hard drive that's in this thing as well to give those who may not know the older hardware very well. So let me get the... Uh, let me get this out and we'll have a sticky beak. All right, so this thing even has one of those 1930s three and a half inch floppy disk drives. Now, these are these, these horrifically slow and terribly bad. Now, it, it looks like one of these old SATA plugs. Now, most people wouldn't know what these are, but basically these are emulated from the old uh, Parter which again, worked at about 1200 board. These run at about 2400 board, so it can take about eight hours to install anything on. But these are the two ethernet cards here. All right, RE0 and RE1. Um, the MSK is the big problem. This is uh, one of these old vacuum tube Pentium Celerons uh, that runs at the old, you know, single core hunk of crap that basically you can't do anything with these days i mean if you're running around with one of these god only knows how how your computer runs i mean it must run like a pig so what we're going to do is uh as you can see i've got i think it's six gig of ram in this thing i think there's um one two well, there was six gig of ram in this thing what have I done? Um, should have been two and... Oh, it's one gig there. I thought this thing had... Maybe it did. Oh, no, I know what I've done. It's all right. Yeah, that's right. The, one of the sticks. 
was in bad. That's right. It used to be two two gig sticks and two one gig sticks, but I think I've ended up down with four one gig sticks. But that's fine. That's more than what OpenSense needs, essentially. So now these are these terrible optical drives, right? Now these these aren't used today. I mean, like I said, these only transfer at about one nano bit an hour, which is why this video is going to be about. 12 to 14 hours long because that's how slow it is to install all right so the next thing i want to do is uh put the disc in that that, that optical disc garbage and then we're going to boot up into OpenSense, install it initially configure it so we can actually get to its management portal and then we'll have a sticky beak at it uh on the main pc so let me do that and we'll be back Alrighty, so the disc is in. What we're going to do now is go back around to the front of the cabinet and boot this old uh, vacuum tube uh, small form factor and uh, get OpenSense installed. Alright, so we want to boot from the CD-ROM. Now, the, these are really old. I mean, no one uses CD-ROM these days, let alone DVD-ROM crap. I mean, when you think about it, the default is to use USB or LAM, all right? Most people do that. Unfortunately, old mate doesn't have that luxury, so I'm using the old outdated technology of optical media. It's supposed to be open since. Why did that... That's the old version. That's my existing firewall. This should be open sense. Why did that not boot? Huh? <sighs> okay, hang on. All right, well, this just got a little more complicated. I forgot this is actually a serial CD-ROM DVD drive, right? Now... These used to be called PATA hard drives, but a lot of people look at these um, IDE units as basically running at serial speed, okay? So you're looking at about 1,200 board rate uh, for this. Now, I'm not sure what the idea behind all this was. So I thought this was a SATA, but it's not. It's actually a, a, an IDE. So what I'm going to do is I'll just put it back into the cabinet like this. And uh, this video is now going to take about 24 hours. So let me get it back in the cabinet, powered up, and uh, we'll get going. All right, let's try this again. Like I said, this is this is going to be very slow indeed. Um, so you might what you might want to do is if you've got to go out um, to lunch, uh, I'd take this with you because this video is going to take about 24 hours. Oh, finally, open sense. 20.1. Keen Kingfisher. People often ask how we got anything done on serial hard drives. 
and uh, basically we didn't know any better. I mean, these days people don't run that type of stuff. It's all about um, your, uh, your, um, you know, M.2 drives, which I think are about a dollar a drive now. Someone might be able to actually confirm that for me, but I think they're about a dollar a drive, give or take. Um, then you've also got uh, SSDs, which I think are about, what, 50 cents a drive now? But unfortunately, I just don't have the money. I think a, a four terabyte SSD is about 25 bucks, someone once said to me, and I'm like, well, I don't have that much money. Um, M.2 drives, as people say, you know, it's actually cheaper than filling your car up, uh, at least if you've got a 25 litre fuel tank. Okay. So you can see why people gave up on serial uh, 2400 board uh, optical drives, because they just take too long. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to have a cup of coffee, because obviously, you know, I've got time for a cup of coffee. My old Sun Thin client, which someone told me I was never to use. Just like um, certain people told me never to use my e-server again. And I'm just going to get out one of these. Oop. Don't you ever use your e-server for your own stuff anymore. So one day it'll come back up. Okay. So some four hours later. Oh, look at that. Look at that word. Scuzzy. Oh, nightmare for everyone. Small computer system interface. Terrible format that was. Look at this. 66.7 board rate. Bloody awful, isn't it, really? My camera's gone out of focus. Hang on. All right, that's better. So there's that terrible nightmare. Scuzzy device. Oh, no. 66.7 nanobytes per second. So, like I said, it'll take a while. I don't want to import configuration. I want to start fresh with this. Time for a nightmare. Scuzzy device. How we did anything on those old scuzzies. My God. It, it used to take like 26 weeks before you could use an operating system on an old CD-ROM scuzzy. It calls it a uh, SATA hard disk, but let's face it, SATA's like 45 years old now. I mean, you don't use it. Everything's about M.2 and all that type of stuff. Okay, this, this is a lot slower than I'd anticipated. I'll, uh, I'll be back shortly. All righty. So, I'm not going to worry about the VLANs at the moment. Uh, that's a worry. That's weird, it didn't actually pick up the Ethernet cards. That's a worry. This should have installed. <laughs> um... Okay. What have I done wrong here? Uh, this should have actually... What 
What did I do? This should have installed. Um, hang on. I think I might have mucked something up here. Um, I'll be back in a minute, but I think I've buggered this up. I think there's a step somewhere in the boot process that I've actually mucked up, so bear with us. Okay, I did muck this up. Um, huh. I did something stupid. You guys probably saw it, so... Uh, we're going to go through this process again, um, but essentially I buggered this up entirely, so I've got to start it all again. So once this gets done, we'll be back. Oh, by the way, when it's uh, night time here in Australia, as you can see, it's, uh, I think it's about half past eight Saturday night, so we're still going with this, obviously. So it, hopefully by midnight, we will have moved on to the installation. Okay, well, it's now about 20 to 2 Sunday morning, and I finally got the installer to run. This, for some reason, it's different, because when I did it in a virtual, it worked like a dream, but now, for some reason, I don't know, maybe it's this Valve vacuum tube-based Intel small form factor that's the problem. Um, I don't actually know, but... Anyway, the installer's invoked, so we'll be back shortly. Okay, it's about half past 12 Sunday afternoon now. You can see there. And uh, finally, we are ready to go. Got a configuration. Uh, no, I've got to use MBR because the bias won't know what it is, unfortunately. Okay, continue with the recommended swap partition of 8 gig. Yeah, all right. You see, these old 2400 board DVD drives or optical drives, you know, it used to take us hours to do anything. I mean, we all, if you're my age, you know this from back, way back in the, what's now deemed the dark ages, which is like anything about two, from two years ago. <laughs> you know, the really dark ages of computing where, you know, you could go and have a three course lunch before your computer boots. Um, you know, the dark ages are about from, I don't know, two years ago back, really. And, um, I mean, these days, you know, I'm the only one that uses mechanical media. Everyone else is on these solid state units and all this. But, you know, I just don't have the, you know, two or three dollars just lying around to go and get a four terabyte SSD and, you know, 50 to 75 cents to go and get an M.2 drive. Okay, once we get to the network settings, we'll be back. All right, 10.30, Tuesday morning. We're still going with this. Um, but in the meantime, what I have done is I got bored. So I've actually ended up naming all these units. And there's Nest Server. There's PVE. There's QStore 720XD. There's nothing on that, and on one, there's firewall. So, I got bored and named each of those uh, inputs. Uh, we'll be back, I guess, sometime soon. Okay, some six weeks later, we can now put our passwords in. So, let me go and do that, and we'll be back. All right, password's done. Passwords do not match. Hold on. Okay, all installed. So now what I've got to do is do that. And I've got to get it to... Now that's the wrong IP address, I know that. <laughs> Alright. 
So I've got to go back to the reboot. And you can see there, it took 45 hours. <laughs> For those that haven't worked out what today is yet, you're a bit slow on the old uptake factor. All right. My long-time viewers will know what it is. But for those that don't, you're a bit slow on the old uptake factor. Now, what's that hard drive doing, if anything? Why is that asking me to boot F1? Oh, there it goes. All right. Open sense. So what I've got to do now is actually manually assign the IP addresses so that they are of the same settings that the rest of all this expects. Um, that didn't come up. Uh, hang on a minute. Okay, this didn't happen with the VM. But it's not actually booting into the system. So, I don't know. I've got to work out what's going on here. I'll upload this and we'll come back for part two. See ya.